Dylan, get out of bed. Aren't we doing a video? Bro, you're letting out all the heat. What's that over there? Uh, didn't I tell you? We're doing a diesel heater review today. So you had that cranking all night and I was freezing my ass off in the other swag? Uh-oh. Back to track HQ. G'day old trackers. We've got a very, very exciting one for you this week. Ash, what are we doing? Well, I guess we're going into winter, so we're looking at heaters. We are, guys. So we're doing camp heaters, portable ones uh, that are designed to heat up your tent, your swag, or a small sort of camper trailer or small caravan. I figured, as Ash said, it's getting cold, so this is a ripper video to do. Uh, what we might touch on first, as I said in the last video, I'm gonna start doing disclaimers with every video to let you know where the products are coming from, so that way I'm being 100% honest with you. I hope this catches on with the other YouTubers, as I think there's nothing worse than when people are pushing products and not being honest with you. So this video, sponsored by BCF, what does that mean? That means BCF were nice enough to lend me both of these products so I could review them for you guys. I don't get to keep them, I don't get paid any money by BCF, there's nothing that I get out of this other than getting to make some videos for you guys. So before you jump on me and say, hey, weren't you talking shit about BCF in a couple of videos before? Yes, BCF, I have had some dramas with them. Uh, what I find really amazing, one of their representatives actually reached out to me to find out what I'd had, what my problems were that I had with BCF and what stores and uh, all of that. And they actually took it as an opportunity to grow. So to me, that's massive. Uh, some of the other companies that I've had bad problems with or issues with their products, they've actually done the opposite and sent me emails uh, attacking me and telling me I'm doing things wrong. So I've got to give big credit to BCF and that really changed my opinion massively that they want to fix their customer service. So got me thinking, how many times have you guys been on your way to a camping trip and shit, you needed gas or shit, you left something at home or you needed something and you're able to just whip into a BCF because they're everywhere. So please support them. Uh, I know I should, probably shouldn't have been running them down because I use them every single month to get stuff from, uh, as they're one of the last big shops left supplying all the big brands. So up to you guys where you shop, but I'd have to say this is pretty nice of them to do. Uh, just lend me the products, they're obviously gonna have to write them off and take a loss. So up to you guys, but I'd shop at BCF. Moving on from that disclaimer. Was that pretty good, Ash? Not getting really too much from it. They can't see you nodding. Oh, sorry, yes. <laughs> okay guys, so what we've got, I basically went to BCF and said I wanted to do uh, a heater review and I picked, these are the two best uh, products I could find on the market. Luckily BCF sells both. So I get to do a comparison between them. We've got a diesel heater by Gasmate and then we've got a gas heater by Companion. So what I'm gonna do, I'll basically run through a couple of differences here. I'll also do some stats and then we'll flick over, we're actually gonna do a real life camping tonight uh, where I'm gonna measure all the temperatures for you. I'll do a one hour usage and see how much power they draw over an hour. And we'll get to see how much they heat up a swag and if they're actually useful or not. So let's get into it. We may as well look at the companion first. So the companion is, uh, it's battery powered. So it does have a lithium battery in there or you can plug it in and run it. One thing I want to make note of, the battery only runs for it was like four hours, wasn't it, Ash? Yeah, 4.5 hours. So if you're going to be running this overnight, plug it in. It's, to me, it's sort of portable where you can take it and shove it up your jumper if you're sitting around shove the table. Shove up your jumper. Yeah, put Seriously? up your jumper, heat you up. I'd love that. I'm going to test that tonight, Ash. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, as far as overnight, you'd want to plug it in. It does still work when it's plugged in. It charges and runs off... Uh, the 12 volt. Their cord is two meters long, so really handy. If you're plugging it into your car, you can actually run it out. Uh, and theirs only needs five amps, so you can plug it into your cigarette socket in your car. As far as extending it, that's where it gets a little bit tricky. Runs off either little gas bottles, or you can plug in your main gas bottle. My recommendation is that you plug in your main gas bottle, as one of these only lasts, I think it's nine hours. So 
if you run it off these, you basically got to carry a fair fuel than spare versus if you've got a big gas bottle, you can run off that. The hose on this one does contract. It's nice and strong, so I don't see you getting too many punctures through it. It runs out to a metre, uh, as that shows. It does come off quite easy, and it's not insulated inside. So that's something to note. So it will lose a bit of heat in here. Okay, back on now. So as I mentioned, it does come off pretty easy, so you have to be careful. Uh, this one does have sensors, so if that comes off, it actually shuts off. And if it falls over, it has sensors. And what's really a shame, I, Companion, I really liked their Aqua Cube. It was nice and stable, and when they swapped to the Aqua Heat, which uses this same body, you learn it's not very stable. So if you're not on a perfectly fat, flat surface, it does like to fall over. So uh, unfortunately, I, I'm not, not, a, not a fan of the design that they changed to. Uh, at least they do have inbuilt safety features, so if it falls over, it will cut off. Uh, the other thing to note, this one you can't set the temperature, you can only change the fan speed. It has one set temperature and then you can increase the fan to basically push it further, but by increasing the fan you'll drop the temperature, if that makes sense. Does that make sense, Ash? Yep. Faster the fan runs, slower the heat's going to be that comes out of it. So if you're doing a small swag, you're actually better off dropping the fan right down, letting it take a bit longer to heat the swag up because it'll be hotter coming out of it. Uh, what else can I talk about, Ash? Um, oh, Bluetooth. Bluetooth app. Yeah, so this one is Bluetooth controlled as well as controlled on the back. So there's a little LCD screen there, which I can turn on. Uh, and yeah, you can basically control it on Bluetooth. You only have three fan speeds, that's about it. So it, there's not a lot of variation with it. That's pretty much everything, right, Ash? Yep. Go into the stats when I read through both. On to the gas mate. Oh, so Companion, it also doesn't smell very much because obviously it runs off gas, so a lot less stinky to use. The diesel heater, unfortunately, we might as well touch on the smell. Because it's diesel, it does make, there is a bit of smell when it's on and there's a bit of smell when it's not on if you've spilt it, which I've spilt a little bit on the lid. So being diesel, it is going to be a little bit smellier. It is more economic. Uh, their hose, a lot easier to put on. If you look down there, Ash, They've actually gone to the effort of insulating there so you don't lose a lot. They also give you this to wrap around it to protect it as their hose is a little bit sort of more fragile. You could definitely puncture that with a stick, but it's really handy that they've thought about that and put this on. Uh, something to point out, this is a new model. The old model, you used to have to use a hose clamp to put it on. Now they have just changed it to a nice and simple twist on. There's, you do get a remote control as well, as you can see down here. Remote control comes with it, which just has on, off, uh, and then up and down, as well as your LCD screen. So this one has, was it nine or six? Six. Six preset levels, which alters the temperature and the fan, or you can chuck it on temperature and just set the temperature that you want, but you couldn't control the fan. Uh, and then, yeah, when you use the remote, whatever setting you're on, it then tells you that. Uh, theirs runs off an Anderson plug, needs 15 amps minimum, so you won't be able to run it off your car cigarette socket. And they only give you a meter, so nowhere near as long. I would recommend if you're buying this one to probably buy an extension, unless if you've got a portable setup like me where you can just plug it straight into a battery and have your battery near your tent. They also give you, can you see through that without me opening it up? Kind of. Open it up. So they also give you alligator clips and an Anderson, so if you want to plug it straight onto some battery terminals, you can do that as well. Uh, this one here, a tank of fuel. I'll go through the stats, because all that's on the stats. Because there's not sort of too much more to point out. This one, nice and stable, it's not going to fall over. You do have to be careful. There is an outlet exhaust that gets hot on this one. If you touch that, you will burn yourself. And obviously that's going to be blowing out your diesel smoke, which is going to be quite smelly, so you want to keep that away. Their hose doesn't retract anywhere near as well. It does like to pop back out. Can't see that because it's covered on. So theirs does like to pop back out, which means for transporting, that one's going to be easier to transport. This one I would recommend just putting it in the cover all the time and transporting it in the cover so it doesn't get damaged. But unfortunately you can't compress it. Onto the stats, you reckon? Mm -hmm. so I'm the stat man this time, Ash. You've been cut out of it. Yep. 
so sad about that. <laughs> so let's start off with price. Gas mate, six dollars. So six hundred and forty nine dollars ninety five. So pretty much six hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, versus at the moment, this was on special, wasn't it? Club price special. Yep. Down to four hundred and twenty nine bucks. So definitely a lot cheaper. Uh, we've got the operating modes. So this one runs off Bluetooth. This one has the remote control. You have six different settings that will control the fan and heater, or you have the temperature, as I mentioned. This one, you only have three fan speeds. So it definitely wins on that. Also has an altitude mode. So if you're going above 1500 meters, you can put it on altitude mode. I'm assuming that's because it's running off diesel and the gas doesn't matter if you go above 1500 meters, but I'm not an expert on that. You may have to check if you plan on going above 1500 meters that the gas will still work. Safety features, as I mentioned, this one has a stack uh, of inbuilt warnings and safety features that basically turn it off. The ones we know of is if the gas bottle undoes, it turns off. If the nozzle, outlet nozzle comes off, it turns off. And if it falls over, it turns off. And so there's O2 depletion. What's that? Oh, if it runs out of gas? No, if it senses that O2 levels have dropped. Uh -huh. So you don't get poisoned. Okay, that's pretty cool. So there's another feature first, yeah, the gas mate. Nothing on there is that we can see. Uh, your maximum temperatures that come out of the outlets. Now we have done a test, so when we click across to camping, you'll get to see the footage of the test we're gonna do over there. But this one's saying that it'll let out up to 60 degrees. This one's saying it'll let out 40 degrees. Wait till the test, as I can tell you, that's, that's definitely not what they're doing. Uh, operating temperature, so this is the temperature you're allowed to run it in. Minus 40 to plus 50 for the gas mate. I believe diesel does freeze over once you get below sort of minus three degrees. So I'm not too sure how this will stop that happening. If you guys want to comment below, I know there's some liquid additive you can put in, I believe, because if you're taking your diesels into freezing cold temperatures, you do have to add a fuel additive. Uh, versus this one, we couldn't see what it would go down to. All we could see is that they don't want you to run it if it's above 15 degrees ambient. So that's all it literally had on it. As far as what it can go down to, nothing. Uh, next one I've got for you is the 12 volt. As I mentioned, this one needs 15 amps. So can't run off your car cigarette sockets. This one only needs five amps. As far as power usage, we will be testing that tonight. As I said, we're gonna run each one for an hour and I'll see how much amps it takes off my battery and let you know what it used, what amps it uses an hour for each. Uh, what else we got here? We got the fuel capacity. So this one, as I mentioned, can run off the little butane uh, propane bottles, or it can run off your big gas one, so that's up to you how much gas you've got. This one says it's a 4.25 litre tank. When we filled it up with the servo, as you can see, I wasn't able to get quite full four litres in it. So I'm gonna say it's more so a four litre tank. Uh, battery, four hours runtime on their battery, but I would recommend plugging it in, not running it off the battery, versus this one doesn't have a battery, has to be plugged in the whole time. Uh, and then we've got fuel consumption. So because this one has different settings, there's a couple of different fuel consumptions. You've got, if you're running it on the lowest, you'll get 42 hours out of it. If you're running it on the highest mode, you'll get 14 hours. So that's a couple of days usage, which is pretty good. This one uh, uses 43.7 grams per hour, which means off a cartridge, you'll get nine hours. So basically one of those each trip, as I mentioned, I recommend running it off your big gas bottle. Warranty, you've got one year warranty versus three, definitely wins on the warranty. And this is just a little calculation that Ash and I worked out for you guys. So you could work out how much it'll cost to run these each time. So I've compared this one on the maximum level as this one obviously only has one level. So for the diesel per litre, you will use 53 cents. Uh, so 53 cents an hour. And over eight hours, that'll basically be $4.24. For the gas one, we base, we base it off this, which costs nine bucks, which means you're using 84 cents per hour over an eight hour cycle, that's $6.72. But remember that's pretty much depleted. So really it's nine bucks per usage. Uh, so what we'll do now, 
we'll cut back to Aza camp and we'll do all these real world tests for you. And then at the end of that, I'll give you my recommendation of which one I reckon is better. But at the moment, they've both got different pros and cons. So I'll see you out at the lake. Okay guys, welcome to Lake Lentil. Lentil, Dylan, not lentil. Lentil, like the thing you eat? No. Oh, whoops. <laughs> okay, welcome to Lake Lentil. Uh, so yeah, this is actually a really beautiful spot. We're just sort of west of Maribor. You go down a dirt road and come to the dam that feeds Harvey Bay Maribor. It's actually a really ripper spot. But as you can see, what's going on here, Ash? Where's, where's the companion? Um, it blew up. <laughs> so unfortunately, guys, we, we assume it's faulty. We could only get it last night in the testing to 24 degrees. And I'm assuming if they only get to 24 degrees that they would be getting heavily returned and wouldn't be getting sold anymore. So that leaves me yeah, thinking that we must just have a faulty model. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to give you any of this real life testing with it. Uh, and we'll just be able to test the gas mate for you. So we did film it all last night, but we're going to redo it now during the day. So let's get stuck into it. What we've got, we'll time it uh, basically from cold to hot and we'll show you how to fire it up. And then I'll get a decibel reading on my other phone of how noisy it is. Once it's all fired up, we'll chuck it into... Uh, We'll measure the outlet and let you know what temperature is coming out of the out outlet of it. And then we'll also chuck it into the swag behind Jash. We'll chuck it into the swag there. And we'll get a reading of inside the swag how hot it makes that. So let's get into it. So this one, nice and simple. First time you use it, you've got to prime it like you do with your blower. So you just hold the primer. You can hear that it clicked over, so that's it primed. Now you hold the power button for three seconds. You'll see it turn on. And what we'll do now, we'll start the timer. And we'll sit that there for you guys. And we'll bump it up into the highest, which is six. Well, actually, we'll put it on the 40 degrees, so that's the maximum heat we can get out. Uh, and I'll chuck that on time lapse while it does its thing. And I'll come back once it's fully, fully up and running and at full heat. And then I'll get the decibel reading for you. Okay guys, so just over a minute it takes for it to actually engage. So I'll get a reading for you. So we're currently sitting at 16.3. And the hose, it's not much more, it's 15. So what I'll do now, I'll put it back on time lapse for you. When we get it up to the maximum coming out of the hose, I'll come back in. I may as well give them while I'm here. May as well give the decibels this is as loud as it's going to get. So, about 60 decibels. It does get a bit quieter, that doesn't it? Once it sort of fires up. Once it's up. Yeah, so we'll come back again once it's fully up to noise and we'll re get that as well. But on the initial startup, yeah, about 60 decibels. Okay, so we're just over four minutes for it to get to heat. Uh, and I'll give you a reading now of what it's actually sitting on. Sixty degrees. So absolutely phenomenal. As I said, it's only meant to be 40, so we're blown away at how well this thing pumps. Uh, I'll get another decibel reading for you. It's a little bit quieter, I'm not sure how much more. Let's take a look. Yeah, 
We're only a little bit quieter. Around that 55 to 60 mark. Okay, so we'll chuck it in the uh, swag now and we'll see what temperature it can actually get the swag up to. Okay, so we'll get a base temperature of the swag. We're sitting at 21 degrees is what our starting point's gonna be. So we'll now chuck the hose in. Biggest trick to this is, is make sure you have it as sealed as you possibly can. If there's anywhere that the cold air can get in, it'll rush in because of that heat. So we'll zip that back up, close that over. We'll check in, we'll sort of, we'll do five minutes uh, and then we'll come back and check it again in sort of 10 minutes and we'll get both temperatures and see what this can crank up to. One thing I want to point out, because it's a diesel heater, it does have an exhaust uh, and we notice it does burn the grass. So you probably want to, if you're going to be sleeping with it overnight, you want to put it above and elevate it uh, just so you don't wake up to any fires. Okay guys, so it's been about five minutes. So to let you know, we're heating up a double swag and this is the Sanhema. So not as thick as your traditional swag. So it is going to let some heat, heat out of it. More uh, the same sort of comparison as what a tent will heat up to. A uh, traditional swag will get a lot hotter than this. But let's see what we're sitting at. At the moment, we're on a nice balmy 32 degrees. We've turned it into a beautiful summer's day in there. We'll leave it another five more minutes and we'll come back and see what maximum we can get it to. Okay, I reckon that'll probably be somewhere near its maximum. So let's see what we're clocking in at now. Oh, check that out, 51.9. Bloody hot summer's day in the desert now. So as I mentioned guys, this is the absolute maximum. There's a whole bunch of different levels you can set it at. Uh, last night we ran it on the lower level and had no problem sleeping there, just took the chill out. Uh, and obviously we're not that cold, it's now currently, I can't be right, 22, 22 degrees. So obviously if you're using it in a cold climate, it's not gonna get as hot as this, but to show you what it can do. Uh, we'll now move over and I'll show you how to turn it off because that is an important part. You can't just unplug Okay, it. so as I mentioned, uh, you can't just unplug this unit. It does actually have a sort of shutdown function where it gets rid of all the diesel out of the lines. So you want to hold the power button for three seconds. It'll come off off and then you just let it do things. And when that off writing disappears from the display, that means it's all ready to pack up. It takes, what, about five minutes to do? So let's give our thoughts and feedback, Ash. How did we find it last night sleeping with the diesel heater? Let's go noise first. Could you hear the noise? Not when you're inside the swag. And I sleep at home with a fan on all year round because I need that white noise. So for me, it was beautiful, nice, relaxing noise. Uh, the heat wasn't really too bad, was it? We were able to put on the lowest function and just take that chill out and sleep quite comfortably. Yep, that was good. And what's really funny, I'll put a photo up now. We were watching the footy last night and both of us had the diesel heater pumping straight into our face. So it was like having a fire. That was a ripper, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So got to give it credit. It's not just for your swag. You can literally have it pumping onto you just to keep you warm at night. Uh, the smell, not too bad. Once it gets up and running, it's nowhere near as strong as when it first fires up. But there is obviously a bit of diesel burn off that comes through that exhaust. So make sure you're using it in a well-ventilated area. That's about all I've got to say, guys. So as always, like, comment, subscribe. I'm off to go do some barra fishing. Apparently there's some barra in here. I'm going to go catch a metery. See ya.